good morning, Rapture Ready Ministry family. But first, I want to say good morning, Apostle, to our guests, Zoom participants. All honor and glory belongs to God. And we'd like to welcome you to our Sunday morning worship experience. I am Deacon Linda Brown, and it is my pleasure and honor to be the worship leader today. And before I go into prayer, I just wanted to say when I was listening to that song, it made me think about this. This is our safe place. You can come in here and worship. You don't have to worry about nobody. They might look at you, that's all right. But guess what? When you start worshiping, somebody else might start worshiping. Amen? So let us worship and praise the Lord today. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just say thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, for keeping us. Lord, I thank you, dear Lord, for your grace and mercy upon us, dear Lord. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, for this is a new day that you have allowed us to see. A new day, another chance. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, and I just ask, dear Lord, that you search our hearts, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. And not that we may be sinning and backsliding, dear Lord, but it may be something we need from you. We may need a push to grow closer to you, dear Lord. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, and I just ask your prayers upon this service, dear Lord. As we are dating our new deacons, dear Lord, new elevation, dear Lord. And dear Lord, and let their elevation, dear Lord, maybe it be an encouragement to someone else. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I just ask the Lord that you just go over the world, the nations, dear Lord. Touch our prisons, dear Lord, our hospitals, the workers, dear Lord. Dear Lord, and don't forget about Rapture Ready Ministries. For that new sanctuary, dear Lord, the safe haven, dear Lord, for your people. Dear Lord, I just thank you, dear Lord, for being a keeper, protecting us, keeping us through the storms, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I thank you in your name giving you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Our scripture is Colossians 3, 16 through 17. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the heart, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. 17 says, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thank you, Lord. And the word of God is blessed. Amen. 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 How many want to go, no matter who goes with you? If nobody goes with you, you go. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you don't need a crowd. You just need yourself. Amen. Send me, I'll go. Amen. You may be seated. I'll go. You have to tell the Lord that. Because sometimes you will be by yourself. And it's okay. It's okay. Just as long as you know that God's with you. And as you go, he'll go with you. Amen. Sometimes the road is rough and, it, and, and the way may be a little cloudy. But if you go with God, everything will be all right. Amen. Send me. Lord, send me. If my mother don't go, send me. My father don't go, send me. 
send me, send me, Lord, send me, I'll go. Even through the highway, send me, I'll go. If the Lord will go with me, yeah. If the Lord will go with me, yeah. If the Lord will go with me, yeah. Send me, I'll go. go in the rain I may have to go in the snow send me I may have to go by myself send me I won't give up I'll go send me send me I'll go it's me oh I told the Lord that a long time ago, and I haven't given up yet. I'm still going on until I reach my destination. Amen? Amen. 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 Just a little encouragement this morning about servanthood. Since we are ordaining uh, two new deacons, I thought that serving, servanthood would be a wonderful topic to talk about for all of us not just our new deacons, but for all of us. And we have a little out of order this morning. Uh, uh, Minister Vanita was supposed to be up here instead of me. And I know she's so happy. You'll see her next Sunday. <laughs> but I thought that since I would be doing the ordination, it would be fit most fitting to do the message as well so we kind of switch places and it's okay it's all right it's okay you will see her next sunday amen <laughs> but what we want to talk about is coming from the scripture that's already been read in colossians 3 16 through 17 concentrating on verse 17 and it was read to you earlier in your program and it says let the message of christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Here's the one I want everybody to grasp hold of. And whatever you do, somebody say whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks. To God, to God, the Father, the Father through, him. through Him. Clap your hands and say amen. amen. Everything that you do, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. Don't do it for yourself. Do it for Jesus. Amen. amen. When you come to church, don't say, I, I'm going to church Sunday morning again. Do it for Jesus. Amen. amen. Do it because you're coming to serve and worship God. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you. We just magnify your name today, God. We thank you for the message, oh God. We thank you, God, for telling us how we should be as servants. All of us will work for you, God. You are the king. You are the employer. You are everything that we need. And God, everything that we do, we want to honor you. Father, we thank you for reminding us it's not about us. It's about you. And we thank you for that today. Holy Spirit, do the increase in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, you're talking about leadership. When we're talking about servanthood, we're going to talk about leadership is servanthood. When we step into the leadership role, that's servanthood. Be prepared 
if you're stepping into a leadership role, whether you are on your job or whether you're at church, it's going to be a servanthood. Yes, folks are going to take you for granted. Yes, folks are going to talk about you. Yes, folks are going to do everything they can possibly do to you. But you got to remember who you belong to. You are a servant of the most high God. So true leadership is servanthood. And the greatest leader of all is Jesus Christ. And that's who we follow. Don't follow me because I might stumble a little bit. You better follow the one I'm following, Jesus Christ. And so when we follow Jesus Christ on the path that he was on, we will be okay. Servanthood is an attitude personified by Christ. When we look at servanthood, we look at Christ. We look at the life that he lived. We look, look at the character that he was. We look at Jesus Christ. Stop looking at folk. Folk are human. They're going to fail. Look at Jesus Christ. Take your eyes off of folks and look at Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. And so servanthood is an attitude personified by Christ who through him was in the form of God. He was God, but he was also human. And he did not count it robbery to be a servant, even though he was God. He, was, he, he could have called down legions of angels to come to his rescue, but he did not. He came as a servant. He came to serve. He didn't come like they thought he would come in. They thought he would come in to rescue them from a government that was almost like ours but he didn't come that way he says i come in peace and i come to be a servant serving others is the very essence of ministry y'all we'll talk about ministry let's talk about serving others all believers are called to ministry all believers are called to ministry say that all believers are called to ministry and therefore, we are all called to be servants for the glory of God. Living is giving. How about that? If you're living, you're supposed to be giving. All else is selfishness and boredom. How about that? Anything else is selfishness and boredom. You got to give. What do you all give? Whatever you have. Here in Colossians, the Apostle Paul opens the idea of servanthood and following Christ is included in every aspect of our lives. Every aspect we are to follow Christ. Whatever we think, whatever we do as believers, we ought to be compatible with the example of Jesus Christ. Now, if you would open your Bibles and, and do some research, you know, Google is real good for y'all now. You don't have to do all that hard work anymore. If you would Google the characteristics of Christ and study them, what did Christ do? How did Christ act in circumstances and situations? This is how we're supposed to do in servanthood. In the New Testament, we find many who call themselves servants of Jesus Christ. We got plenty of examples from the New Testament. And for instance, the Apostle Paul, which was a great, a great servant of Christ, referred to himself as a servant of Christ. Apostle Paul was great. He was well-educated. He could have done anything he wanted to do, but he considered himself a servant of Christ. If you would look at Romans chapter one and verse one, it, he identifies, this is Paul now, identifies himself as a servant of Christ. Called to be an apostle set apart for the gospel of God. What are we called to do? To be set apart for the gospel of God. But then again, if we look in Philippians chapter one, verse one, Paul also says that he and Timothy are servants of God. Now he's gonna add someone else with him. He's got some company. He's not going by himself. He's got some company now. He's got his protege, Timothy. And he's saying that we now are servants of Jesus Christ. Even the half-brother of Jesus, which was Jude, referred to himself as the servant of Christ. Rather than capitalizing in on the close relationship of Jesus, Jude referred to himself as a servant of Christ. You know,
know how our relatives want to hang on to our what we are. Oh, that's so and so. I'm I'm so and so's cousin. I'm so and so's aunt. I'm so and so. You know how we want to capitalize on our relatives if if they've done anything. But Jew didn't do that. He says, even though Jesus was my brother, I'm still his servant. Can you say that? Even though Jesus was his brother, he says, I'm still his servant. That's what we got to do. We got to lay down those little titles, lay down who we think we're supposed to be, and say we're servants of the most high God. Jesus, family, friends, and chosen apostles refer to themselves as his servants. That's what I'm trying to get to us today. We got to refer to ourselves as servants of God. The plain implication being that Jesus is Lord and whatever we do, whatever they did, whatever anyone else does, we got to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. If we are called as servants of Jesus Christ. And so I want to capitalize real quick on two points today. One point is a servant of Christ knows who is the king. You might want to write that down. A servant of Christ knows who is the king. If we are servants of Christ, we know who our king is. It's not king someone over another country. It's not our president of the United States. We know who our king is. And so point two I want to talk about is the universal requirement of servanthood on the way to greatness. There's a universal requirement for all of us on our way to greatness. You want to be great? There's a requirement. Greatness doesn't just fall out of the sky. It comes with an appointment. It comes with a requirement. It comes with hurt and pain. And so if you don't want to go through anything, then don't choose Jesus Christ because you're going to suffer just like he did. But I would advise you to, to, to choose Jesus Christ simply because you're going to suffer no matter whether you got him or whether you don't. But if you have him, you have more power to overcome your circumstances. You're going to suffer. You're going to go through some things. You're going to be up. You're going to be down. You're going to be in a mountain. You're going to be in a valley. But just know that if you are a servant of Jesus Christ, he's right with you. He'll take you through. And so if I go back to point one, a servant of Christ knows who is the king. A servant, you and I. If we know Christ, we know who's the king. A servant of Christ is one who has voluntarily set aside his or her own personal right in order to love, in order to serve, and in order to obey the will of God in Jesus Christ. I know we're grown. I know we're over, over, overgrown. And I know we have choices. And I know we want to do what we want to do. But if you are a servant of Christ, you, have, you must voluntarily set aside your personal rights. That means some things you're going to have to give up. Some things you're going to have to say, nope, I can't do that. Can't go there. Can't do that. Can't say that. You're going to have to give up your personal rights. Sometimes you want to, somebody cross you the wrong way. You just want to take them, take them out. You can't do that. Your personal rights, you got to give up and give it to God. God said, I'll fight your battle. If you're just what? Keep still. Close your mouth. Keep still. I'll fight your battle. I'll make your enemies your footstool. That's what he tells us. I'll make your enemies give to you when they don't want to give to you. I'll make the whole department give you a raise when nobody else wants to give you a raise. Yeah. How do I know that? I'm a living witness. Yeah. I'm a living witness. I've seen it done. I've had it done. Don't tell me what God can do. Don't tell me that just because you're in that department, working wherever you're working, that God won't show you favor. But guess what? He'll bless everybody else too because of you. It's your personal rights. You got to give up sometimes. Nobody says you got to be a doormat, but you got to give up your personal rights. And say, I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to pray for you. Sometimes you got to realize who the king is and obey what God says. 
Servants of Christ die daily to sin. Whoa. We sin every day by word, thought, or deed. That's why we ask God to forgive us. Nobody in here is that holy. Everybody sins. You think wrong, you talk wrong, you, you walk wrong, you smell wrong, you do everything wrong. <laughs> because why? You're human. And you, we come through that sin canal. We live in a sinful world. It does affect us. But guess what? We die to that. How do I die to that? No. I say no. Just say no. I'm not doing that. I'm not going there. I'm not going there with you today. I'm just not going to do that. So we die daily to our sin fleshly desires. Our fleshly de desire says, I want to go buy that lottery ticket. That's what our desire says. Come on, y'all. Talk to me. Because you all know that. You know you want to go buy the lottery ticket and get the think you have a chance to get that large sum of money. Yeah, we want to do that. We do. If you tell the truth. Man, guess what I could do with that money? I could get paid to church off. That's not what God wants you to do right now. Man, I could bless my family. That's not what you're supposed to do right now. You're supposed to seek ye first the kingdom. And all these things he will add unto you. Stop trying to get rich quick. God will supply every, every need. Not one, but every need. And guess what? You don't have to play the lottery. God says, I have a thousand cattle on the hill. You only need one. You only need one. So if you want to go play the lottery, I'm not going to tell you not to play the lottery. I'm going to tell you that's not what God would do. That's not what Jesus would do. I'm just saying you don't need to if you trust God. God will supply. Some of these things that we want, we really don't need. But God said, I will supply every need. He will give you the desires of your heart. That's what the word said. And so to be a servant of Christ, to seek his will, in all things. Seek his will in all things. In all things. Seek his will. You say, I don't know how I'm going to do that, God. I've got something a challenging that's coming up in my life. I don't know how I'm going to make it, God. He says, I do. Trust me. Just trust me. And so to be a servant is to seek his will in all things. You and I primarily desire every day as a servant of Christ is to honor and glorify the one who brought us freedom. Do you know anybody else died for you? I don't know anybody else. Even the, the people that serve in the armed forces, they die for us. They die for this country. But the one who gave up the life for us, for our sins, so that we may live again, is Christ. And so we have to honor him and glorify him because he brought us freedom. Not the kind of freedom that the armed forces bring us. He brought us eternal freedom. And so this means we must renounce our right to direct our own lives and seek ways to bring our master pleasure and honor which leads us to the path of greatness. This is what I'm talking about today. The path to greatness is servanthood. By honoring God, by glorifying God, by showing that we love him. This is how we get to greatness. Just as a master in ancient times took the responsibility of caring for his bond servants, so our Lord says that he will provide all of our need when we seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. What do I mean? I'm going to look at the things that the kingdom has. What would the kingdom have? What would God's kingdom have? What, what are the things that I need to do to make sure that I'm glorifying God and the kingdom that he has for us? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is what the prayer says. Thy will, your will, God, will be done. As it is in heaven, on earth, I'm going to bring heaven to earth. But I got to realize who the king is. It's not me. It's Jesus Christ. 
So I first must seek his kingdom and the righteousness. Our master Jesus has given us instruction in all his words and expect those who profess his name to know them. Do you know? Do you know the instructions? Well, you start off with the first 10 commandments. Now, in the Old Testament, there were, God gave 10 commandments, and man made 633 out of those 10. No wonder they couldn't follow them. They couldn't even follow 10. They had to go make 633 out of 10 commandments. Ridiculous. So if you want to know what the commandments of God is, look at the Ten Commandments found in Exodus 20. Just look at them. As you begin to look at them, study them to know what God says about man, to know what God says about himself. And so as we learn more, we do better. That's my favorite favorite. Uh, thing to say is when you know better, you do better. Servants of Christ put into practice all they learn about pleasing the Lord. Because why? He is the king. I want to please the king. I don't want to please rapture ready ministries. I, wanna, I don't want to please apostle. I don't want to please uh, my brothers and my sisters. I want to please God first. Yes, it's nice to please everybody else. But please, God, first, am I pleasing to God? While he has specific jobs for each of us, according to the gifts and opportunities, he provides some requirements are universal for everyone called to servanthood in Christ. You see, all of us have, gift, have gifts and talents. We don't always use them, but we got them. We came to earth with them. We came to earth with special gifts and talents that nobody else can do. Yes, some of us have the same gifts and talents, but yours is special. Just like your fingerprints are special. Just like your eyes are special. Each eye, each, eye, each person's eyes are different. There are no two people alike. There are no copycats. There are no imposters. There are no one else like you. You are special. You've been made special to do special things. When people tell you, you you are nothing and you are nobody, you say, but God says I'm somebody. I'm fearfully made. I'm blessed. I'm a king kid. I belong to the most high God. And so whatever he has, I can have it too, but I got to first follow directions. I got to know who the king is. So that leads me to point two, the universal requirement of servanthood on the way to greatness. There is a universal requirements. There's some requirements of servanthood on the way to greatness. You want to know what those are? I'm so glad you asked. I have eight of them, eight requirements on the way, eight requirements of servanthood on the way to greatness. Number one, continue in faith. Stop doubting. Every time you turn around, it's, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Stop doubting. Put your faith in, put some feet to your faith. Faith without works is dead. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to stretch out on faith. Because God, I believe you're going to make it. You're going to make whatever I need, that situation, you're going to make it right. Number one is continue in faith. Stop talking doubt. The enemy wants us to doubt our faith. He wants us to not believe in God. But he's a liar. Don't you know he's a father of liars? Number two, destroy arguments and every tower opinion raised against the knowledge of God. Stop letting people talk to you about the Bible and they don't know squat. Stop it. Stop letting people tell you what the Bible says. They're only telling you what 
part of it says. They only tell you the part that they like. But when you know the word, you get back the word correctly. So stop, destroy, destroy the arguments that people have. Oh, you don't need the tithe. No, you don't. It's up to you. But guess what? If you do, you're, you, you, you're better than blessed. There is a principle to tithing. There's a principle in what you do for God. No, the rapture is not in the Bible. It's short and end. But there are all those scriptures all right over there. See them? Pointing to the rapture. That's why I put them on the wall when we first got here. 13 years ago, I said, I got to have the rapture scriptures on the wall because these people don't believe there's going to be a rapture. It's not in the Bible. No, it's not. But guess what? All of those scriptures point to it. Stop letting people lead and guide you in directions you shouldn't even be in when you've been taught better. It upsets me sometimes when I hear people that I know has been under this ministry and they talk foolish. Like, what in the world? Where, where were you when we had Bible study? Where were you when we do have Bible study? What on earth are you thinking about? Well, I don't know. Well, read it, please. Or ask somebody to explain it. I don't understand this. Can you explain it to me? So then but number two was destroy those arguments. Number three is take every thought captive to obey Christ. You know, good and well, every day we get up, we, we get up with thoughts in our mind. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't give that. All those thoughts, bring them into captivity, capitalize them and put them in a box and throw them away. Bring them down off of your, out of your mind and says, I am going to do the opposite of what my thoughts are saying. Because you know we can think some stuff. We can, when, when God tells us to go right, we can go, we, we definitely want to go left. So bring those thoughts captive so that they will obey Christ. Yes, I want to tell them off. Really, I do. Because they deserve it. Bring that thought into captivity. Sometimes saying nothing is better than saying a whole lot because you can't take back what you've already said. Words have power. They bring life or they bring death. Amen. If you don't want to kill anybody, don't say nothing. Absolutely nothing. Walk away. It's okay. It's okay. Your little ego might be hurt. It's all right. Got to fix it. Four, pursue holy living. Pursue holy living. What do I mean when I say holy living? living. Watch what you put in your temple. You got high blood pressure, stop eating all that salt. You got sugar, diabetes. Hey, bring it in, bring it in, in subjection here. Do what the doctor says. Take your medicine. Drink, drink the things that you need to drink. Because the Holy Spirit lives within your temple. And so if your temple is all messed up, the Holy Spirit is having a problem trying to navigate through all your mess that you're putting in that temple. So, so pure, pure holy living is do what's right. You got to, each day you get up, you got to pretend that you see Christ sitting right beside you. And when you look to the left or look to the right, you see Christ. So therefore, if you got to look straight ahead and say, I'm going to do what I need to do, because guess who's watching me? Christ is watching me. There is an angel recording everything that we're doing, everything that we're saying. Someday, it's going to be brought back to you. What you said, what you should have done, what you could have done, but it's going to come back to you on a screen. Will you be ready? Pursue holy living. Then number five is daily crucify the lust of the flesh. What does that mean? The lust of the flesh. Our flesh wants to do what our flesh wants to do. I want to drink a beer, y'all. That's what my flesh said. I want to go to the casino. That's what my flesh says. 
I want to go to this party. That's what my flesh says. Crucify the flesh each day. Crucify the lust and the flesh. Crucify the lust and the flesh. What do I mean the lust and the flesh? We all know about sexuality. Crucify that lust. That's what it is. And the flesh. We know the order of God. We know what we're supposed to do as Christians. Crucify. Say, I'm not doing that. Right now, America is battling monkeypox. Crucify the flesh. I'm not even going to go in there. That's another whole story. Crucify the flesh. Number six, love your brothers and sisters in faith. Yeah, we all got a little, our little problems. Elder Faye, I can't stand the way Elder Faye looks. I can't stay with, stand with Mr. Minister Benita. Well, she, she, I just can't go with her right there. Everybody got something wrong with them. What's wrong with you? What bothers me are we so holy and sanctified just because we know Christ? But we're no better than nobody else. We all got problems. We all got little faults. We all got little things that we need to work on. Why are we personifying on somebody else's stuff when we got a big moat right there in our own eye? Work on your own stuff. Love your brothers and sisters in faith. Stop talking about your brothers and sisters. When somebody brings up your brothers and sisters' name, say, uh-uh, I'm not going there. I'm not even going to go there. It's not worth talking about. Well, Sister Barthi, thing don't do such and such a thing. Okay, what are you doing? Crucify that flesh, that gossip. You know, we love to gossip. Crucify it. Crucify it. Love your brothers and your sisters in faith. That's what the household of faith, we're supposed to treat each other better than we treat anybody else. But somewhere along the line, somebody has told the Christian folk that we're supposed to grumble and complain and talk about each other while we're in the house of God. Somebody told them that. But that's not what Christ said. He says, love your brother and your sister in faith. Stop talking about each other. That upsets me sometimes too. Because when I look around what we have in the body of Christ, none of us have a right to talk about nobody else. Take it to the Lord. You got a problem? Take it to the Lord. If you can't, if you can't talk it out between your brothers and your sisters, and get a right agreement, take it to the Lord. It'll be okay. Number seven, store up treasures in heaven. That doesn't mean you're not supposed to have your 401k. That doesn't mean you're not supposed to have a bank account. That doesn't mean you're not supposed to save. Our formula is 10, 10, 80, 10% 10 to the church, 10% to your savings account, and 80% you pay your bills. That's our formula. 10, 10, 80. When you do that, you honor God. 10, 10, 80. 10 to your saving. 10, <clears throat> excuse me. Put 10% of your, your money in savings. 10%, you're supposed to make sure that everything is okay. And then they, your 80% you live on. So listen, when you do those things, store up your treasures in heaven. Don't worry about that fancy card right now. Don't worry about that big house right now. The interest rates are crazy. You probably don't need to buy a house right now. But store up your treasures in heaven. Do good. Give somebody something. Take somebody something. Make sure that your neighbor is okay. Don't store up all these things here on earth for the moth to eat. That's what the, the, the scripture tells us. The moth is going to eat up all this stuff after, you know, if you, how about if you accumulate all this stuff in your house? Someone else got some, so, so much stuff in our house, we don't even know what we got. Some of us got so much stuff, we go buy all the stuff because we don't know what we got in our own house. Ouch. 
Some of us got clothes, some of us got shoes, some of us got everything in the world, more than enough. And then we can't find it when we want it. Oh, let me go buy such and such a thing. You already got it. It's under that stuff there. Don't store up treasures on this earth. Make sure you store them up in heaven, which means do good for your enemy, the one who talks about you. Do good. Do good for those in the household of faith. Make sure, make sure that you're take, that taking care of the household of faith. We tell our young people, when you get a job, make sure that you remember where your blessings came from. They came from honoring God. Then number eight, eagerly await the master's return. We're anxiously waiting for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We don't know whether we're going by the rapture or whether we go by the grave, but we're, we're anxiously waiting for the master's return. The earth is groaning because of so much sin here on earth. We don't know how long it's going to take for God to send his son back, but we know it's closer than ever. We do know that. And we do know that he promised to come back to take us home. Like I said, I don't know whether it's be by the, by the rapture or by the grave, but our job is to be ready. So the universal requirements for servanthood on the way to greatness is number one, continue in faith. Destroy, number two, destroy arguments. Raised up against the knowledge of God's word. Destroy them, take them down. When people say something that's stupid, like that's not right. That's not what the word says. And go find it. This is what the word says. This is what we follow. Number three, take, no, take every thought captive to obey Christ. Take those thoughts, those evil thoughts. I'm going to get you right now. Nope, not now. I'm going to let God handle it. Take those thoughts into captivity. Do good. Four, pursue holy living. Not any kind of living, holy living. Sometimes you need to turn off that TV because it's got so much junk on it. You're like, I don't even want to see that stuff. Most times we were, uh, my sister and I were talking about most times we watch, we watch Fred Sanford or Good Times or something like that because we get tired of seeing sex. We get tired of the cussing. We even have to watch what our, our, our three-year-old watches because the cartoons are awful. We're like, what? So sometimes you just got, hey, I'm not, I can't turn off, I got to turn off that. Pursue holy living. Number five, crucify the lust and the flesh. Bring that lust in, in captivity. Bring it in. You, we lust after many things, lust, lust after worldly things. Bring it in. Number six, love. Love lifted me, your brothers and your sisters. In faith, that means the household of faith. Love your brothers and sisters. Stop talking about them. Love them. Seven, don't store up your treasures here on earth. Make sure you got a supply in heaven. Store them up in heaven by doing good. Do the right thing. It's what we call do the right thing. The more you give, the more it will be given. The last one, Eagerly await. Look for the master's coming. We, that's why we come to church every, every week. We, we're worshiping and honoring God, and we want to. We're waiting for him. We're waiting for God to send his son back. We, we're making sure that we're ready. We're making sure we hear, hear the word. We're making sure that we're doing things right. Sometimes we have to be reminded of what we're supposed to be doing. You know, we forget. Or we think we forget. But we forget sometimes how we're supposed to be living. Servants of God are of Jesus Christ do their work. Here's a good one. Humbly and selfishly desiring only to please the king. There is no pretension, no self-importance, 
no conversation, seeking in true servanthood. It's not about me. I'm not going to church because I want apostle to see how good I am. I'm not going to church because I want apostle to see how I do certain things a certain way. I'm going because I'm going to serve Jesus Christ. It's not serf, uh, servanthood is not self-seeking. Therefore, as a servant on the path to greatness, all the things we do is under serving man's applaud. All the things we do here on earth, it will be all be forgotten one day. Man will applaud us while we're here, and all the one day it will all not matter. We won't even be here. But what we do for Christ will last. Therefore, as a servant on the path to greatness, all the things we are doing, make sure that you're doing, for, doing them for Christ, for Christ's sake. There is one last thing I want to talk about in servanthood. Servants of Christ on their path to greatness consider the lives on earth as a brief time of preparation for eternity. You're not going to stay here. You're just traveling through. Get it in your mind. One day, we're going to leave here. One day, you'll be gone from here. All saints of God have to realize that we're just passing through. We're pilgrims through this barren land. And we're all alone to this earth. That's why it's important that you treat each other with kindness and with love. Because someday we ain't going to be here. Someday you may be crying over this casket when you should have been crying and, 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 and honoring the person before they got to the casket. And so... Here's what we do. Our path to greatness, we have to consider there's an eternity that we're going to be placed in one day. Titles won't mean any, won't be any good. Titles don't bring greatness unto God. Our path of service and honor unto him is what makes us great. I don't care how many deacons we get. I don't care how many trustees we get. I don't care how many ministers we get. I don't care how many ministries we have. If it's not done unto honor to God, it has no meaning. None whatsoever. There is a saying that our, uh, a General Bruce Clark said. And here's what I like about what he said. He says, rank is given to you to enable you to better serve those above and below you. So what do we have servanthood for? To better serve. Those, and that's right. Don't look at, don't look down at your brother, unless you're picking him up. Don't think too highly of yourself, because the same way you went up, the same way you can come down even faster. Don't ever forget, when we are serving others, we are serving Christ. God the Father has served us by sacrificing His only Son on the cross for our sin. What a gift! And we should serve others by giving the gospel to others as well. Those who desire to be great in God's kingdom must be a servant. That's, I can't say that enough. You must be a servant. Your title means nothing. You must be a servant. Yes, your title has a little bit of clout to it, but it doesn't mean that you're any better than anybody else. You are the same. We're all the same. The hardships and struggles we must face while in the flesh will be far outmatched by the glory and reward of God that's awaiting us. Servants of Christ live for the moment. He will say, my favorite saying, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of of your master stand to your feet servanthood i want us to remember what servanthood means it means serving others not ourselves but others if this ministry has been a blessing to you and you would like to sow a seed you may do so by cash app 
dollar sign r r m s a l i s b u r y m d or by mailing your c to rapture ready ministries incorporated 368 Cary Avenue, Salisbury, Maryland, 21804. Also, please follow us on Facebook at Rapture Ready Ministries Incorporated. May God's continuous blessings be with you and your family. Hello. I am Elder Dr. Sharon Washington. Our ministry is in the process of building a new sanctuary that will be a blessing for our growing congregation and community. To complete our new construction project, we are soliciting support from generous individuals, ministries, and businesses. There are several projects we have initiated to help generate funds, such as purchasing a leaf from our fundraising tree at $100 a leaf, or planting a seed offering of any amount. You may send your donation by cash app address, dollar sign, R-R-M-S-A-L-I-S-B-U-R-Y-M-D or by mailing your donation to Rapture Ready Ministries Incorporated, 368 Cary Avenue, Salisbury, Maryland, 21804. Thank you so much for your kind consideration and may God bless you abundantly.